Hello y'all, I'm back with another episode. So, I decided to cover another biblical topic today. In my opinion, religion is one of the most important topics humans can dive into, and so, when I say that my podcast covers important topics, religion is definitely going to be some of those important topics. Today I'm talking about Jesus and his humility. Many people look at Jesus and for, for good reason that he was a person who died on the cross and we should be grateful for his sacrifice. And I, I am, and that's a great thing. But I also feel like his character and his attitude in life and his actions are a great model to look up to. And if, if people apply the actions that Jesus acted out and the attitudes he had and apply them to their lives, I feel like their lives will go better and they will be better people. And I think humility was one of the key character uh, aspects that Jesus had. And let me just quick read this verse. Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Jesus made himself of no reputation, became a servant, met the needs of others, and was killed in a brutal way even though he was innocent. I paraphrased it, but I, I'm trying to find ways in which he was humble. And Jesus was a person who hypothetically was the Son of God and knew everything and was all-powerful and was incredibly wise, wiser than anyone else. But he took an approach of I'm going to become a servant. I'm going to meet the needs for others and I'm going to I'm going to come into this world lowest on the totem pole. I'm not going to come here in this earth through conquest and using my powers. I'm going to come here in humility and in love and I'm going to impact people in that way because he felt as if that was the best way to captivate his audience. And and I agree, honestly. I, I think that people who can explain things and who are in a humble way and who are humble in general, assuming that they are ignorant, assuming that they have a lot to learn, and not attempting to prove anything to anyone, except that they want to be a loving person. I feel like those kind of people captivate people way more than people who attempt to explain things in a way that's arrogant and condescending, like, oh, I know a lot about this, and it's obvious that you should know a lot about this, and I don't know why you don't know a lot about this, because it's actually pretty easy, because look at me, I know about it. And I do know people who have that attitude, and in my opinion, when they speak, they're not speaking in ways that, in in order to try to help others understand or or trying to learn themselves. I feel like sometimes they have they have some insecurity because they realize that they really don't know that much, so they try to put up a front that they do know a lot. But regardless, in my opinion and from my experience, people that I've met who who talk in a humble way, in a way that's conducive to learning and humility, they learn the most, grow the most, and they help others learn and grow the most. And I feel like Jesus took that approach. And those who act, those who I've met in my experience who act humbly, in my opinion, they are taking one of the core aspects that Jesus acted out and they're applying them to their life. And they're, they're acting as Jesus would to some of their ability, maybe not to the best of their ability, because that might not be possible, but... So first off, Jesus hung out with people who were considered outcasts, people that were sinners, or, well, everyone's a sinner, <laughs> but anyone who was deemed unworthy in that society that he was, was living in, and, and those who were lonely, lost, and in pain, but also who were willing to admit it. They were willing to admit that they had messed up, or willing to admit that they had made mistakes, willing to admit that they may not be on the right path. And Jesus hung around with those kind of people because 
I think he realized that those kind of people are the people who truly are interested in learning. The people who can ex admit they've made mistakes, those are the people who can grow the most in life. Because this is the beautiful thing. I'll just explain this little story. It's T.S. Eliot wrote this play called The Cocktail Party. I think I've explained it before, but I might as well explain it again. Where there's a, there's a woman at a party and she runs into this counselor who happens to be at the party and she sits down on the couch and starts explaining like, man, I'm not doing well in life. There's a lot of things that aren't going my way. I, I'm having a lot of bad luck right now and I just don't know what to do. Can you please tell me what I, what I need to be doing better? Please tell me where I'm making an error. Why am I, what about me is not right? What about my actions is not correct. And the counselor was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, I would rather have me be at fault than the world be at fault. Because if the world is at fault, then I'm completely screwed because I can't change the world. And if the world is set against me, then I'm completely effed. But she's like, I'm wanting you to tell me that I am at fault because guess what? I can change my actions and I can change myself with some discipline. And and the counselor was agreed that that was a great perspective and I don't fully know what else happens after that, but that story is incredibly useful because she took this humble perspective. She she realized that hmm, I can't change the world, but I can admit that I have made mistakes and I can admit that I have character flaws and I can admit that I have a lot of room to grow. And Jesus, it seemed as if his inner circle was made up of people who were willing to admit that they had made mistakes, willing to admit that they had sinned. And some of his, most of his disciples were people who, like tax collectors and People who society didn't necessarily view as, oh, the pinnacle standard of per people. But Jesus saw that in their character, they were willing to learn, grow, be humble, and admit that they had made mistakes. And I can learn from Jesus and from the disciples from this story that I've explained. It, I can learn that I want to surround myself with people who are willing to admit that they've made mistakes, willing to admit that they're ignorant, and willing to learn. Because, in my opinion, when I'm surrounded by people who have that mindset, the entire group grows. And the entire group seems to want the best for each other. And it's, the entire group seems to love each other in ways that people who assume that they are smart and all-knowing don't always don't always love in the same way. Um, so one of my, one of the greatest aspects of Jesus is, like I've continued to say, is his ability to stay humble, even though he might know everything and might have ultimate wisdom on everything, every subject. He offered his opinions in ways that, that didn't make it sound like he was all great and so amazing and so smart and oh come listen to me because I I have all the power and knowledge he explained stories in specific ways strategically he spoke because he felt as if the, the wisdom that he would he would give would help the person and really make them think and challenge them in a in a good way because those lessons might have challenged him and helped him and this has been one of my main goals with the podcast because you could scroll through all 24 or 23 of my previous episodes and you could think, Harley, it seems as if you think you're an expert on this, 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 and this, and this, and this, but in my opinion, I am still such an ignorant person on every one of those aspects, even after doing some research and talking about them. I didn't talk about them for very long, and there's still such a huge amount of things that I don't know about every one of those. It's because I'm aware that, as humans, we have such a narrow scope of the world, and the more you dig in to try to understand something, the more you realize that, hmm, I am ignorant, 
Wow, this is complex. Man, I have so much to learn. And, and, and I feel like that aspect of humility is the best method in which to grow because you're able to, like the cocktail party play example says, that woman was able to admit, hmm, I'm ignorant, hmm, I made mistakes, hmm, I could improve, and tell me where I've made mistakes. And, and that's one of my main goals with this podcast. It's to um, assume that I'm ignorant, venture out and try to learn things, and if I find anything that's useful, I want to share it with others because I want to try to help others. Because if, they were, if these ideas were useful to me, hopefully they'll be useful to others. And, and I feel like that's... I'm not perfect at this, of course. No one is. But I feel like those of you listening... Try to ask yourself, when you're explaining a topic, are you explaining the topic because you are still trying to understand it and you think that hmm, maybe this could help the other person listening or it would help me to flush it out? Or are you explaining it because you feel as if you need to prove yourself? I need to prove that I'm smart. I need to prove that I'm wise. I need to prove that I am better. And the first option of tempting to speak because you feel as if it's a useful thing to know, you're going to captivate more people, you're going to befriend more people, and more people I feel like are going to respect you. Versus if you take that second approach, I feel like you're going to become more isolated because whoever you're going to run into, you're going to, people are going to realize that, hmm, this person doesn't have that humble approach, and people might not even realize the importance of humility, but I feel like subconsciously, they, people avoid people who are arrogant and condescending and assume that they know everything. Just without even realizing the psychology behind it. I think that that's how people act. And that's how I act. When I see someone who is humble and able to explain themselves in a way that's like, yeah, I'm still trying to understand. I found this to be useful. What do you think? Explain to me where you think I've messed up in my explanation. Those people are able to have discussions and I'm able to form deep relationships with people like that because there's there's that attitude of I want to grow with you and I want to grow as as a group and as a person and so yeah I that's kind of been my one of my goals of the podcast and the other goal of the podcast there's like many if you listen to my intro episode you hear all my goals but these goals constantly evolve and in learning about these stories of Jesus and how the people in his inner circle were the people who were willing to admit that they'd made mistakes. I, if you look back to my first episode, episode one, it explains, it's where I'm explaining to the world that, hey, I've been wrestling with this porn problem and I, I am not doing well. I, I've hit a low point and I want to improve and I need to get this out because I needed some accountability and I needed to get it off my chest. And I felt as if me, me explaining it to the world, anyone who might listen would be impacted positively. And that was my goal, when, one of my goals with doing it. And, and when I look at who Jesus surrounded himself with, he surrounded himself with people who were willing to admit that they'd messed up. And here's the lesson to us all. Every single one of us has made mistakes, has limits, and has flaws. And it is up to us whether or not we want to be the bigger person and admit that we've made those mistakes. And there's not a single person I know that hasn't made mistakes. But it's the people who have owned up to it are the people that really earn my respect. And so yeah, that's, that's part of this discussion. The next part. Jesus took a redemptive stance when he met people. Let's take Matthew, for example. Matthew was a tax collector. Like I said, tax collectors were looked at as not the pinnacle, but more of a pit of society. They were the people who were maybe thieve-like, or they weren't honest. And, but Jesus, he looked past that. He, he, he didn't judge a book by his cover, and he... He looked at the character and he, and he tried to get to know Matthew and he realized that Matthew, once you get down into the deep conversation, Matthew is willing to admit that 
yeah, I've made some mistakes. I might have stole some from here or from there, but I'm sorry for what I've done, and I, I want to be better. And, and Jesus took him along and said, hey, do you want to be a disciple? And he became one of the close you know, followers of Jesus because of that. And, and that kind of shows me that, you know, in your profession and in your life, you're going to make mistakes, but it's those who are willing to own up to it are the people who form connections and are the people who grow the most and are the people who are modeling Jesus the best or the people who are modeling his disciples the best. And let's take another verse. So Matthew 22, 37 through 40. It's another, another paraphrase, but you can look it up. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus explains this to some, some religious leaders and others. And one of the religious leaders says, so Jesus, he's trying to trick Jesus maybe, but Jesus, he asked Jesus, so who is my neighbor then? Who's, who's our neighbor? And so Jesus then explains the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I'll just quick explain the story. I'm not, I'm not that knowledgeable of it. Someone could give a way better interpretation. But the parable kind of goes as if, so there's a man, and I think he's a Jewish man. And he's walking down the road, a road, and he's beaten up and robbed and mugged and left on the side of the road to die, practically. And so let's give a little context. Jews and Samaritans, they weren't the closest. They, there was a culture war going on. Normally, Jews and Samaritans didn't assimilate. They didn't associate with each other. And... So that's just a little bit of a context. Like there, normally people would not treat other people of the other culture with respect or with love, but Jesus explains that this Jewish man was was beaten and on the side of the road, needing someone to help him up and get him some medical help. And but the first person walks by, and doesn't help him. The second person walks by. I think these first and second people are Jews, meaning they're of the same denomination as the person on the side of the road almost dying. But the third person walks up and he happens to be a Samaritan. And the Samaritan actually, he takes the clothes off his back. He gives it to the man. He gives the man his camel or his horse or his donkey. I don't even see, like, I don't fully know the story, but I, I understand the gist. And the Samaritan went above and beyond. He sacrificed his time and his, his materials to get this Jewish man help. And, and it just, and I'm sure when Jesus was explaining this in the culture back then, people were like, wait, what? I'm supposed to help, I'm supposed to help a Samaritan or I'm supposed to help a Jew if they're hurt. I don't, no one I know does that. We don't do that. And like, I'm sure it was a shock to people who heard that, but it's, it's those of, I think he was trying to paint the idea that, hey man, we're all humans and we all go through patches of, you know, rough, patches in life and if you're able to give unconditionally and love other people you you will do th you'll be acting in ways that are god pleasing and it takes a bit of humility to go out of your way and say hmm I guess I'll try to help this person, or uh, I guess I'll serve this person. Oh, I don't think they deserve to be served. Oh, I don't think they deserve my help. Oh, my time is valuable. I don't feel like giving it. But if you're humble enough, you might be able to give that time and sacrifice your, your, you know, your effort. And I'm not explaining the story as if, oh, Harley's the good Samaritan all the time. I really am not. I'm not the greatest at serving. I'm not the greatest at loving. I'm, I'm just here to explain that I feel like this story and this aspect of humility that Jesus talks about all the time and, and acts all the time is a way that I feel like when you apply it to your life, your life gets better. And 
you make the world a better place when you apply the, that aspect of humility and love into your life. And it's, it's kind of the same idea of if someone wrongs you, you turn the other cheek and you, and you forgive them and you humbly realize that could have been me who slapped them and they might just be having a bad day or oh, I wonder if something else is going on in their head that maybe I should be a, a servant to them or maybe I should, you know, try to help them and no one I know is perfect at this. But I think Jesus sets the bar so high because he want, he knows the potential we have to get close to it. We have, we have the ability to get better and better. We will probably never reach that bar, but you'd be surprised at how, how much of a difference you can make in your life and in other people's lives when you take on that idea of, I'm, I'm ignorant, I can learn, and I can grow, and I can better the world through love and through truth and I think that I think that Jesus is such a great model and there's a lot of people I know who 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 almost shove off the responsibility onto Jesus and say well Jesus took care of my sin Jesus took care of my mistakes I I don't have that much more work to do besides believe in him and that might be true but I also feel like it lets people get off the hook because if Jesus took care of all your responsibility, you now you have no obligation to try to act as he did. And, and I really do think that Jesus, God, whatever all that might mean, I really think that the goal, one of the goals of them was to have people try to model Jesus in their actions. And it's not just about believing, it's about trying to apply that into your life. And someone might hear this and say, I know Harley, he's been, uh, I've seen it where he hasn't been humble, I've seen it where he hasn't loved me, and I've seen it where he's being a hypocrite. And, and that is so true. I've been all of those things. And I just, I think that this, this idea is so important, and it's one of my goals. Like, it's not, I'm not saying, out here saying, oh, I've reached this goal and I'm already there and I'm a humble person. No, it's a goal of mine. And like I said, that bar is so high and I'm down here trying. I'm trying. And so I just thought that maybe explaining my thoughts on humility and the traits of Jesus that, a trait of Jesus that I really thought was useful to apply, I thought that explaining that might might make a difference and this butterfly effect thing that this podcast this like I've gotten some flack before about some of my biblical episodes because some people might think that I'm speaking things that aren't necessarily biblical or I'm not always using verses to back up what I say sometimes I'm just giving my own experience or my own opinion but one of my other goals with this podcast is to get people thinking and to get people talking about religion more because from what I can tell, people don't talk about religion that much. When people get meet together, they, they mainly just talk about the small things. They might talk about work. They might talk about, you know, whatever. But there isn't that much discussion on religion. And I've heard that my podcast has actually sparked conversations about religion and about the Bible and, and just about worldview and perspective. And it's honoring to hear that because that is one of my other goals. Because I feel like... In today's culture, there isn't that much deep discussion going on, and that's one of my favorite things in life, and that's how I grow the most. So, take what I say with a grain of salt. Don't believe everything that I have to say, but if you feel as if it's useful and important, maybe, maybe try to share it with your friends, because if it was useful to me, maybe it'd be useful to you, and maybe it would be useful to your friends. And so... I guess the message here is attempt to ask the question, what would Jesus do in this situation? And, and then ask the question, where have I made mistakes? How can I make up for those mistakes? And how can I improve for the future, knowing that I'm an ignorant person who has such a narrow scope on the world? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I, I did. I thought it was a now I have a few verses to back up my thoughts on humility and 
when I'm acting in the world, hopefully these verses and these this perspective on the Bible can make me a slightly better person, like I keep saying. Barely better. Barely better. It's that incremental improvement. But all right, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for listening to the Harley Sealbinder podcast. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's keep making the world a better place, one deep, important conversation at a time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.